Hello demons and welcome to the Demon Hunter PvP guide for 9.1. In this guide, we're going to be going over the 9.1 changes and their impact, as well as which race and talents you should be using. Not only that, we're also going to cover the Covenant and Soulbind changes and which is the strongest in the current meta. And finally, we'll end this guide with some necessary macros you need to unleash your inner demon on your opponents. And if you're looking for a one-stop shop to absolutely crush your opponents in this new season, look no further than Skill Capped. Over on our site, you'll find guides that perfectly follow up this entry level guide, including our world class courses that walk you through everything you need to know to bring your Demon Hunter gameplay up to the level of a pro. There, you'll find videos on how to damage, CC, use cooldowns, and exactly how to execute your playstyle to a standard that only the world's best players understand. In addition, weekly releases of arena commentaries allow you to keep up with the ever evolving meta and learn how to take down some of the most difficult matchups. And if that wasn't enough, skill capped members get exclusive premium access to our Discord server, where you can question our team of pros with anything you need to know, all from as little as $4.99 a month. First, let's talk about the new 9.1 changes to Demon Hunter, starting off with regular talents. Unbound Chaos saw a nerf to its damage, likely to reduce the one-shot potential when comboed with the hunt. Luckily for us, the nerf wasn't enough, making it still the best talent in the third row. Soul Rending also saw a nice little change, making it more useful outside of Metamorphosis while remaining unchanged inside of Meta. This change is very welcomed since we've struggled to stay aggressive versus cleaves that target us. Netherwalk and Desperate Instincts also saw some minor changes, however, we don't believe they'll impact the decision making for this talent row. Netherwalk will still be best versus setup comps, while Soul Rending will still be used against Cleaves, just like 9.0. And now onto the PvP talents, we have some completely new ones. Isolated Prey and Chaotic Imprint are brand new and work like damage multipliers for us and our team. Combined, you can do some nasty nasty damage alone and with your partners. Keep in mind guys, chaos damage is every school. So chaotic imprint, no matter the RNG school you get, will increase your chaos damage by 10%. On the more defensive side of things, we now have a new talent called Glimpse. This talent has a lot of outplay potential, specifically versus warriors and RMP. This is because you can immune CC, making scripted setups hard to get right. And comboed with rain from above, you now have 75% damage reduction on a 1 minute cooldown if you feel like playing extra defensive. Darkness saw a bit of change. It now gives you a chance to avoid damage by 50% instead of 20%. However, the talent cover of Darkness got reworked to no longer up this to 70%. This change is very welcomed because it means we now have a PvP talent slot we can use on other stuff. And that rounds up the 9.1 changes for Demon Hunters. Now let's go over race. Demon Hunters only have one choice for each faction, Blood Elf and Night Elf. Blood Elves get Arcane Torrent that functions like a Fury Builder and a Purge. If you watch our Demon Hunter guide on how to deal damage, you'll already know this. But in case you haven't, Arcane Torrent is extremely useful due to Fellblade and Demon Blade being the best right now. Demon Blade can be extremely inconsistent at times, so having something consistent to build your fury is actually very appreciated. Night Elves is incredibly fun since you get Shadow Melt, which makes you go stealth until you move and is usable in combat. It can even be used to immune spells by using it right before a projectile hits your character. In this example, after killing the priest, our demon hunter recognizes that Stormbolt is coming off cooldown soon. So to make it possible to shadow meld, he starts creating distance between him and the warrior, making it easy to shadow meld the Stormbolt. With that out of the way, let's go over the talents you should be using in PvP and when you should be swapping them. For the first row of talents, you'll want to use Fellblade, no exceptions. This is due to the fact that the increased mobility by having Fellblade indirectly gives you more Fell Rushes, since you'll be using Fell Rush less by having access to a gap closer from Fellblade. This makes you harder to kill, and Demon Hunters are already pretty squishy, so this is an easy pick. For the second row of talents, you'll want to pick Demon Blades. This is just because you picked Fellblade in the previous row. These talents synergize really well because Demon Blades passively procs Fellblade CD recess while you're spending Fury. You will therefore almost always have Fellblade off CD when you finally need it while you are Fury starved. For the third row, Unbound Chaos will be your baseline choice. However, there are scenarios where Trail of Ruin is better. Trail of Ruin is better whenever you need the extra mobility, for example if you're facing Arcane Mage or Hunters. The overall DPS should be the same as Unbound Chaos, but you'll be missing out on the heavy burst, which is what Demon Hunters are all about. For the fourth row, Soul Rending will be your baseline choice due to the buffs in 9.1. However, there are scenarios where Netherwalk will be the better option. If you're playing comps that kill you in stuns such as RMP, being able to preemptively netherwalk their setup will be much more useful than simply being more durable to consistent damage. In this clip, the druid gets kidney shot and our demon hunter presses netherwalk as a response, completely negating their setup. 
For the fifth row, first blood is the only choice. The rest just don't add anything of value other than lower damage. In the sixth row, you'll want to be using Fell Eruption. This talent is mandatory since it lines up with I Beam, allowing you to do consistently strong kill setups every 30 seconds. And finally, in the last row, we'll want to embrace our inner demon and pick Demonic. This is because Demon Hunter is all about burst damage and Shadowlands, and this talent does just that. Alright, now let's go over some of the changes to PvP talents that came with 9.1. Your baseline default setup of PvP talents should be Mortal Dance, Isolated Prey, and Chaotic Imprint, all of which are a new addition in Season 2. You'll situationally have to change to Reverse Magic whenever the enemy team has Magical CC like Polymorph or Freezing Trap. Ideally, you'll want to replace Mortal Dance with it, but unless you're playing with a class that has Mortal Wounds such as Warrior or Monk, Isolated Prey will have to be the talent you replace. Glimpse, a new addition in 9.1, is extremely useful versus Rogues and Warriors since it dispels this arm off you and allows you to avoid all CC while taking 75% reduced damage until you hit the ground. Comboed with rain from above, you become much harder to kill. You'll want to replace either Isolated Prey or Mortal Dance with Glimpse. However, on the off chance that you're playing versus RMP and need both Glimpse and Reverse Magic, use the PvP talent setup as shown. When playing 2v2, Cleanse by Flame can be useful when your win condition is training a Resto Shaman or Resto Druid. This is due to the fact that Mass Entanglement and Earth Grab Totem completely removes any type of pressure you have. And again, you'll want to replace Isolated Prey with this. Even though there were some changes to Covenants in 9.1, the best Covenant is exactly the same as Season 1. You'll want to be Night Fae for the Soul Shape and the Hunt. Soul Shape allows you to kite much easier since it can be used while rooted, and can also be comboed with Netherwalk for repositioning when needed. There's multiple combos possible with Soul Shape. For more information on this, watch the tips and tricks section of our Demon Hunter guide on our site. The Hunt is a casted massive burst ability that can either be fake casted to force cooldowns or simply used to kill your opponent. In this clip, the Hunt's massive range was used to execute the mage who was across the map in Narnia. As far as Soulbinds are concerned, there are a few misconceptions that we should quickly clear up. Nia is the best choice due to Grove Invigoration, which effectively increases your mastery by 20% for 30 seconds after your Hunt. And for Demon Hunters, this is a massive deal because our mastery increases all chaos damage which is almost all of our damage. Some people find Corrain to be better and a case could be argued in Season 1. However, with the new addition of Bonded Hearts in 9.1, there really can't be a case made for Corrain anymore. Bonded Hearts might not seem that strong on the surface. It'll essentially heal your team for 2% of their health whenever you proc your Grove of Invigoration. That doesn't sound like much, but when you combine this with a hunt which procs Grove of Invigoration 12 times, you're then all of a sudden looking at healing your entire team for 24% of their health. Absolutely insane. Compare this to Karain's Wild Hunt stratagem that essentially just increases your damage to your target by 5% for 10 seconds whenever they drop below 35%. Once you've selected Nia, you're gonna need some conduits, so let's break it down by each type starting off with potency. Relentless Onslaught is a massive proc that, combined with Chaos Theory and Metamorphosis, will completely annihilate your opponent. Growing Inferno is best in slot for PvE due to its high DPS output, and in PvP it's no different. Once you start using this, you'll quickly notice that Immolation Aura becomes one of your highest hitting abilities. In 9.1, Unnatural Malice got a pretty hefty nerf. It no longer increases damage of the hunt, but rather the dot itself. However, it still remains the best option. For the single endurance slot you have, Vicious Ink is a no-brainer. Having a passive damage reduction to magic is better than any of the other options. Most comps that will kill you, kill you in stuns, and those comps usually have magic damage, so it's easily the best pick. And finally, for finesse, we pick Fellfire Haste. It's nice to have because Demon Hunters are extremely squishy and your mobility is what you'll have to use to survive. Thus, being granted a movement speed increase on Fell Rushes will make it easier to live. And last but not least, Ravenous Consumption. This is honestly just the best one available. It's not amazing, it's not terrible, but it's still the best. It'll sometimes assist you in dispelling combustion for instance, which basically counters all of a Fire Mage's burst. Next up, let's talk about how to gear your character in 9.1. There are multiple options for gear with a bunch of different stat combinations. So how do you know which one is right for you? We use a term called stat priority, which basically means we prioritize items based on stats. For Demon Hunter, the stat priority is agility, then versatility, haste, mastery, and crit. All gear purchased with conquest points will now scale up 13 item levels, making it far superior to most PvE gear. There are some new PvE gear you can get from Sanctum of Domination that has special sockets for new gems called Shards of Domination. These gems are nerfed by 50% in PvP, so they aren't completely necessary in Arena. If you manage to get your hands on a piece with a shard socket, just make sure it has versatility on it. Otherwise, your conquest PvP gear is probably better. But don't sweat it, you don't need this new gear to be competitive. If you get it, great. If not, well, no worries. 
When it comes to which order to purchase your PvP gear in, your weapons are going to be the first pieces to buy. Most classes just get the main hand, since offhand generally is a stat stick. However, for Demon Hunters, it's a little different. That's because Chaos Strike uses both your weapons to deal less damage, hence why you'll notice that it actually hits your enemy twice every time you use it. But for the rest of your pieces, the order you buy them in doesn't matter too much. Instead, just get your free pieces from the vault and work around that. Just make sure you follow the stat priority, buying the pieces that gives you the most versatility and haste upgrades. Finally, let's look at some macros that will help you in Season 2 and beyond, starting off with the absolute necessities. We got a Cursor Metamorphosis macro. This will make your meta instantly trigger wherever your mouse is currently located, skipping the need to click on the ground. Another necessity is being able to cancel Immolation Aura at the press of a button. This is important because a lot of CC break on damage and we obviously don't want to be doing that. This can be done with a simple Slash Cancel Aura Immolation Aura macro. Personally, we like to use this macro for managing our Immolation Aura. It uses Immolation Aura if no modifier is being pressed and if Shift is held then it cancels the aura. This way we save valuable keybind space. Now for the more quality of life macros, here's something you probably haven't heard of before. CQS CQS stands for Cancel Queued Spell. Spell Q is a setting in the game that is automatically turned on, and should be because it allows you to circumvent the penalty of having higher MS than other players by allowing you to simply Q spells rather than having longer globals than other players. The downside of this however is that you will sometimes be in a situation where you'll want to change what spell you've queued up. Slash CQS does exactly that. We personally have this in all our CC macros, so that we can cancel whatever we have queued up to CC when needed for those split second decisions, making our play more fluid. Focus macros are extremely important to use for CCing since it allows you to deal damage while CCing your focus. To make them, simply put an at focus condition in a cast macro. This macro for instance will use fellow eruption on the focus target upon press. A lot of pro players use modifier conditions in their macros to save valuable keybind space. For example, here we make the macro use fellow eruption on our primary target if no modifier is held down. If the shift key is held down however, then the macro will use fellow eruption on the focus. You can even take a step further and use arena 1, 2, and 3 conditions to CC anyone in the arena without targeting them. Most pros use this for their interrupt abilities combined with a modifier condition. For instance, this macro will cast Fellblade when no modifiers are being held. If Shift is held, then it'll cancel the queued spell and cast Fell Eruption on the focus target. And finally, if Alt is being held, then it'll simply cast Disrupt on Arena 2. And that concludes the Demon Hunter PvP guide for 9.1. If you want to continue this course, be sure to check out skillcap.com slash wow, where we have tutorials and commentaries that teach you how to play Demon Hunter just like the pros. As always, thank you so much for watching. We hope you learned something. See you soon.